This is a hammering 101, nail and hammer basics. We're having a conversation here, thinking about what we could film to help us with the idea of hammers and nailing. And we come across some differences of understanding, realizing that we have uh, different ways and techniques of pounding the nail. Mr. P is a big proponent that everybody has their own way of hammering. But Ms. H argues that if you've never done any hammering before, you're going to need to be aided in how best to do that. Right. So we're going to just talk a little bit about how these two have learned to swing the hammer and what the most important details are. Very good. Okay. So you go ahead, Ms. Well, H. Let, let, me, let me just start with basics. You know, you, we're all going to be nailing a bunch of nails. A couple of things to, to think about. If you look at your board down here, from phase one, hopefully you learn this. This is a knot in the board. This portion of the board is very dense. You do not want to put, try to put a nail through a knot here. If you do, chances are that nail is going to bend or it won't drive in. Okay, so always be aware of that. If you had a nail in that area, just cheat. Go right to the side of it. Maybe you have to angle your nail but try not to drive your nail into that knot, okay? You might even chip out the board. What, would you, what do you think are they gonna learn when they try doing that because they think we're stupid and don't know what we're talking about because we're so old? See how the board is cracking? <laughs> it's beautiful. Okay. The, the nail is actually bending as well. It's a very dense portion of the board. This will eventually probably crack off. Okay, watch how I pull this nail. A lot of you go like this. Instead, take your hammer, get it locked in all the way tight, and go to the side. Much easier to pull a nail that way. You can go to this side or this side. We'll, I'll show you another example when we do drive another nail. Beautiful. All right, talk about the difference between the heads of these two hammers. So this is a waffle head, this is a smooth head. Most likely you go on construction framing and you'd be using this one. This one would be using like finish work. Um, anything has to deal with finished stuff. What's better and why? So if you're gonna use this to do like cedar material finish work, when you make a dent to this, it's, it's smooth and grade. You know what I'm saying? The wood will span and contract later. So, but when you make a waffle mark, it's hard to make that disappear. It'll indent it harder. You guys call them mule tracks. You yeah. lift a hammer mark there in the board and the waffle head makes a big one so then why use a waffle head at all you can use it because it's, it grips better when it comes to nailing um 16 8 d's the actually, rough nails you know what i'm saying see the grooves style. on this nail it grabs yeah. those grooves this is waffle too on there mm -hmm. so the finished nails that these to get nailed to are smoother head you don't have a waffle head on those so for framing, we want that waffle head on that uh, 16 penny or 8 penny sinker. Yeah, It'll correct. give us a better grip yep. on the surface. Correct. Yep. Good. But otherwise, as in hitting wise, the same thing. All right. So what it. about a hammer motion, arm position, those kinds of things? Um, we all have different ways of doing it. Everybody has different ways. Like my hammer, it's probably about 16 inches long. I always choke up. I don't know. I choke up on these hammers. No, okay. I'm, and I hold mine like this. Yeah, Miss H holds back there. I don't. I See choke all that up. way down there? I have the most of the hammer available to me. Okay. Everybody has their own style. We're not telling you what to do, but I want you guys to get comfortable doing what you have to, doing what, you're, what you feel like doing. Do you squeeze or do you lo have it loose? I have it loose. I don't so squeeze do I. tight. Okay. Yep. You don't squeeze tight. Nope. When I nail this, I'll get the nail set first. You know what I'm saying? You try to tend to aim it straight in, okay? If you're in it in the end, and you can feel the difference, hear the difference, okay? You can be, you gotta be able to hear if you're hitting it right. If you hit it straight on, it's more solid sound. If you hit it on the edges, you hear like a ticking sound. It's like hitting a golf ball. For people who don't golf, let's um, try it, it's a fun sport. But otherwise, <laughs> hit it straight on, Okay, drive it in there. Now, if I was going to use a little one here, it's a smooth head, so. It's 
Same concept, same swing. This is a lot heavier. This is a 20 ounce. This here is only a 15 ounce, but it's a longer shaft. Right. And it's not so much how much energy you put in the swing, it's the accuracy of your swing. And the dead on. Where the head hits the nail. And um, what would it be? The, the natural swing, right? Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about the angle of how you set that nail. Right. See now how I did that? Because I see that my swing is coming down here when I, when I come to the nail. So I want it to go drive straight on. So see how I angled my nail? Okay. Just like that. So you've angled that nail slightly toward you. Yeah. I mean. Because of how your hand right. position is. It's the way your hands come down on it. Okay. If your hand's coming down straight down like this, then you want the nails tight. As right. Bring that see. hammer right down you know the way Ms. H did and then leave it right there. See so that? I can get, I want everybody to see the idea of how that hammer head is sitting. And if that nail is going straight in, we've got a discrepancy. And what happens typically is, especially with a smooth head hammer, we slide right off the yeah, end of the nails, nails and we bend the nail. Right. I mean, we're nailing on a flat table here. If you're nailing on a wall, you know what I'm saying? On a wall, my, hand, my nails tilt up. Okay, if I'm nailing on here, my nails are tilt upward. Because of the angle the of my hammer, hammer comes head down. related to the nail itself. Okay, I always set my nails a little bit high, angle high a little bit, mm -hmm. when I nail it on the wall or something. Anything high, then I tilt my nails. Now we know this is only gonna come with practice. But we want the concept understood so that when we get out into the field, we've got to get a heads up and we've yeah. got a little bit of an advance. You want to be able to nail, but you're not going to nail constantly, people, out in the real world. You're not going to constantly use your hammer. The hammer is there for you to use to nail or beat something over and nail certain things, but you would not be using it a lot. What would you be using to, instead? You'd be nailing, using a nail gun, which we will get into that later. Mm -hmm. I can, there, there is one area where you will nail a lot and that is in concrete form. Concrete form You'll right. use your hammer a lot. Because yeah. we use duplex nails to create those forms and um, they're temporary. But otherwise, you won't see a lot of nailing in framing. Mm -hmm. so How about pulling a nail now when it's embedded some? So if I got a nail that's like this one here, Miss H goes left to right. You can go left to right with a longer shaft, you know what I'm saying, with a shorter shaft because snapping it back is a lot harder because you need leverage. Or you can do is just put a block underneath here. Put a block underneath here and just give you more leverage, torque. You know what I'm saying? Snap it back. Now, if it's indebted like this, that's where your cat's ball come in hand. You take the cat's ball, you beat it behind it, you drive it in there. Then you gotta pull it out. Yeah, that's locked. That one, that one must have been mine. Yep. <laughs> and then once you get it so far, that you want to use a hammer. You can, might have to do this. This one's gonna be really tough coming up. Now that's the one where I would roll the hammer over. Now I would over. start rolling it. Now he's got the fancy yeah. attachment to his. Yeah. Yeah. That we have one of these. Hold on, slow down. Let me see in there with That's the camera. The it grabs it. Two hundred dollar hammer pays off. How come you're sweating? <laughs> so you use the little notch yeah. that sits inside that shank, and that allowed you to grab the nail head and then pull it over. Yeah. We can do another one right here. Well, let's try another one. Okay, now this little cat's paw here, which you guys ain't gonna get, but that's pretty nice. You take this round part here, you see it, you, my hands shake, so. <laughs> well, my camera shakes. Beat that in there, so you indent it. Then you take your hand, cat's paw, sharp point here, you get behind it, then you dig in there. Try hitting it and then. Huh? Okay, you get it started now. Now you take, on. Now you take this hammer. Use that one. Uh -oh. 
take this hammer, lock it in there. You see that? He's just showing off his hammer now. Yeah. <laughs> then you just pull it. Now you should be able to take it in and snap it. All right, Miss H, I want you to see your skill set here. I'm going to show you a common uh, thing that I've seen in the field, and I actually did it with an apprentice once. Uh, the apprentice had a brand new hammer. Well, I did, I didn't, we didn't have a cat's paw at the time, so I said, well, why don't you just take this hammer, then take this hammer, and use your claw as a cat's paw, right? That was all fine and good. See how I'm going back and forth on this? Not breaking a sweat, not curling my hammer around. Now I want to tell you that that's, that's not a good thing to do. Why? Because the hammer that we used was a brand new hammer. The first time that this hammer came down on the other one in the scenario I'm telling you, a piece of metal chipped off and shot into his hand. Oops. That's one of those mistakes that we made that I won't do again, um, especially with an apprentice. But you will possibly see that in the field. Just know the dangers that are out there. There's going to be a lot of tricks that you will get from other journeymen, from other carpenters. Um, sometimes you have to take it with a grain of salt, and sometimes you have to use common sense on what techniques you want to use. But no matter what techniques you use, make sure you're careful. The key seems to be like, these are tools that we have to become so familiar with that these basic processes of hammering a nail and pulling a nail become second nature to us. Yep. And if you've got a hammer available to you at home, use extreme caution. We can't advocate that here, but we do want you to do whatever you can to practice mm -hmm. and actually get familiar with pounding nails. It's not as easy as it looks. No. And kids come in here and go, yeah, we know how to hammer nails. And we actually get them out in the field to try to actually put walls together. And it's way more challenging than they ever thought. Right. One more thing I want to say. Remember, what's holding this nail is your fingers. One strike from this hammer is going to hurt. When you go to set a nail, See how much lower my hand is? It's not up here when I'm setting it. Imagine what's going to happen. Once you get that nail set, it's in the wood, get this hand out of the way. Chances are you might miss and you might hit a knuckle or a piece of skin. All right, so how many uh, days have you gone to work where your knuckles were just aching as a result? <laughs> I don't think it's aching, I think it's bleeding. Yeah, it's bleeding, it's, I've got blisters, I, uh, seen, I feel like you break your bone. I seen one student here, um, but actually when we teach concrete form, he didn't let go of the nail. The dude just kept nailing like he, like, <laughs> like he didn't phase him, but his blood's come flying out of everybody else. It's like, come on, common sense guys, when yeah. you get the nail set, move your hand. Yeah, get it out of okay? there. Okay, we don't want to see no blood, we don't want to clean up nuts to nobody, and we don't want to see nobody <laughs> yeah. getting hurt. Right. Yeah. All good stuff. All right, so this is a Hammering 101, Nail and Hammer Basics. We'll tell you lots more when we get to see you face to face.